Welcome everyone, this is Sean with MTG808 Jr. and today we're going to be taking a look at the top four decks from today's Youth Standard Popper Tournament that was hosted by The Planet. Uh, before we jump into that though, just want to make sure everyone knows about our upcoming scholarship tournaments. Um, we're for sure going to be running one in early December and then hopefully we will be running a second one this school year in May. Um, that second one is contingent on our Patreon page reaching our $400 per month stretch goal, um, but I am confident that between now and May we will be hitting that goal, so, um, you know, please uh, keep your ears out and get ready to play some Youth Standard Popper for some scholarship. Alright, um, so we ran a tournament today over at The Planet. We had 10 people show up, 10 youth participants and here is our top four um jeffrey here playing red white go wide julian playing red black burn jacob playing mono white aggro and daniel no smiles uh was playing uh, his trusty blue green merfolk deck so congratulations to all of our top four finishers um we are going to be taking a look at each of their deck lists um we're going to start here with daniel's all of our deck, all of these deck lists are going to be linked in the description of this video. So if you want the text version of them, you can go ahead and check that out. Um, but for now, we're going to be swapping on over here to Magic Online and starting with Daniel's Blue Green Merfolk. All right, so this this list is pretty stock. Um, I, I think he hasn't played Magic in a few months, uh, picked up his old trusty blue-green Merfolk deck, didn't change very much, and then, uh, you know, showed up to today's tournament and, you know, got a, his first um, top four. I think, yeah, Daniel was saying this was his first time making the single elimination rounds of the tournament, so congratulations to him. Um, not much has changed from this, uh, this build. We've covered this video many times in other deck texts. We'll link to one of those in the description here. Um, but Merfolk is very solid and, very, and is losing very few tools um, in the upcoming rotation. Uh, I think we're going to have our post-rotation Merfolk video up sometime this week and we talk about uh different ways that they can replace unsummon and cartouche of knowledge but um outside of that the rest of the deck is pretty much not rotating at all hone kopesh is easily replaced by short sword and then cartouche of knowledge and unsummon have some alternatives but this is daniel's blue green merfolk deck and uh I, I guess uh, just some some highlights from his play today he did a uh, sideboard in haze of pollen when there was like uh, he was playing for the draw against Mono White, and uh, they they went to game three with like five minutes on the clock. He sideboarded into Haze Apollon, and then uh, Haze Haze his opponent on the last turn, and and it was it was a pretty interesting strategy that he employed there, but it worked out uh, just how he planned it. And then um, he also had a really impressive draw against Blue Green Auras, uh, which is just a straight up race that matchup. But he went turn one Miss Cloak Herald. Turn two, River Herald's Boon. Turn three, second River Herald's Boon. Turn four, Hone Kopesh equip it, and then killed his opponent on turn five. So that was really impressive. Um, this Merfolk deck has got a ton of power. So congratulations once again to Daniel uh, for coming in fourth. Um, coming in third, we have Julian playing Red Black Burn. Um, this isn't. Uh, we we've seen lots of red based, uh, you know, aggro burn decks kind of do well. Julian took it one step further and splashed just a touch of black for Sovereign's Bite, which uh, goes to the dome and gives his him a, a little life total buffer. Um, we, I did see him burn a bunch of people out. You know, they were at like 10 or 11, and he would have like a Firebrand Archer in play and just go like, end of your turn, Lightning Strike you, untap Sovereign's Bite, you know, some you know, shock you or something like that. And then his opponent would just be dead. Um, so he's got a lot of shots to the face with this deck. Right, lightning strike, sovereign's bite, shock. Um, he's even playing open fire here. Pyromancer goes straight to the face, um, and then night market lookout. It it attacks and drains the opponent for one. Even if they have even if they have blockers. Um, what else? G uh, Gitu journey mage goes straight to the face. Fanatical firebrand can go straight to the face. Um, so he's got just lots of straight burn, some cheap creatures, and. It ended up working out. He is only playing 15 lands, which I thought was absurdly low. But, um, you know, his whole deck is just one and two drops and a couple of three drops. Um, he is playing Tormenting Voice to kind of just help him 
uh, churn through his deck to get the cards that he needs. I did criticize his deck building um, before the tournament when I saw him writing up his deck list, and I said, Night Market Lookout with five Swamps in the deck, the number of times that you play Night Market Lookout on turn one is going to be so low. I told him if it happens more than three times in the tournament, I would be very impressed. In the four rounds of Swiss plus the one round in the top eight that he played, he played Night Market Lookout on turn one four times. So he did exceed my expectations, but um, I do think that uh, the mana base of this deck is probably the shakiest part. 15 lands is super low, and um, only playing five black sources is pretty tight. So, But he made it work. Um, he did struggle against the Sacred Cat decks, um, so he might want to figure out, you know, maybe make some room for Magnus Sprays or something in his board. Um, but besides that, he uh, he did pretty well. He lost to uh, Jeffrey in the uh, top four. Daniel lost to Jacob. All right, so congratulations to Julian coming up with a, you know, fresh take on a tried and true strategy and, uh, you know, piloting it to great success. So moving on here, I'm climbing up the ranks with the top four. Uh, moving into the top two, we have Jacob. Uh, Jacob has won the last two uh, Youth Standard Popper tournaments that we've played. Uh, this deck has changed very little from the last tournament, so if you saw our last tournament recap, um, this deck should look very familiar. Um, he did take some of the pointers that I suggested in that last video, namely Cutting Ornithopter. Um, he is still playing more than 60 cards, which uh, I would encourage him to try to trim down on. Um, he is still only playing like three ofs and two ofs of some of the best creatures, but, you know, f only playing one fan bearer as well. But, uh, you know, having uh, diversity in his card choices, I think, uh, left him less vulnerable to some of the, the decks that we're expecting... To, to play against mono white so you know his his deck building has worked out for uh this is the second tournament that he's brought this deck to and you know the last one he won this time he made it to the finals uh the only thing that i would urge him to definitely reconsider is playing evolving wilds it's just not worth it to play a land that comes into play tapped uh in a mono colored deck should definitely you know, like just playing a planes in this slot would be so much better um, but, you know, Mono White, it has been the boogeyman of the format for quite some time. We've spent a lot of time talking about it on this channel. Um, lots of the kids were saying that they were eager to see Mono White rotate out. And, um, I yes, our Mono White video for post-rotation has already posted. I do think that um, uh, Archetype is still going to exist post-rotation, but I think it's going to be much less powerful. Losing all the Embalmed Creatures all the exert creatures um yeah so it's, it's going to be losing a lot of tools it'll still be a deck but it'll be losing a lot of tools um but yeah so there's one youth tournament that we have left before rotation happens i would be very surprised if we saw no mono white at that tournament i i think the people that have had success with mono white will jump at the opportunity to play it one last time all right um that was second place congratulations to jacob and then last but not least our champion um i believe he named his jeffrey likes naming his deck uh, silly names so boros battle and bash um basically jeffrey has been trying to make trumpet blast work in a deck um and you know he found a way to pilot it to some success here he's just playing a ton of cheap creatures and then um talk crappy lead at the top of his curve but all of these cheap creatures um you know rustwing falcon has evasion fan bearer has a great um tap ability sacred cat is essentially two creatures in one so is goblin instigator gust walker is just all around great um so he's definitely trying to keep his curve low go wide cartouche of solidarity helps him go wide as well and then once he goes wide then attacking with three to five creatures makes charge amazing um, as well as Trumpet Blast, and of course Talk Elite is amazing with all those creatures as well. So um, 
you know, we see the white creature package with Sacred Cat, Fan Bear, Gust Walker, um, Takrop Elite, right? These are the usual suspects in the white aggro decks. And then um, we see it supported with just a touch of red for some removal. Um, Jeffrey was so happy to be playing four Magma Sprays in his sideboard against all the mono white decks out there. Um, and then, of course, he also had Trumpet Blast and Goblin Instigator. He showed me the deck list a few nights before the tournament, and I asked him why he wasn't playing Aether Chaser, and I never got a response. I do think Aether Chaser would be very good in this deck. I'm not sure what you would want to cut. I do think that the deck could probably shave one Trumpet Blast and maybe one Talkrop Elite. Um, having 12 effects that reward you for going wide seems like a lot. Um... Usually, if you play it once and you have enough payoff, um, then the game should be over. If you need to draw a second one, then um, something is going wrong. And usually the thing that's going wrong is you don't have enough creatures in play to have a developed board to make it worth having your payoff cards, um, which is why I think Aether Chaser would be uh, a good choice here. But, you know, congratulations to Jeffrey. Um mm -hmm. He did play against me in the end boss battle. Uh, where is that deck? It would be M19. M19, blue black control. All right, so here is my version of blue black control. It has not changed very much. Um, but this is the deck I played against Jeffrey in the end boss match. I took the match in two games, and it didn't really seem terribly close in either of those games. I, I did draw quite well. Um, Jeffrey did get me down to like 5 in game 2, but I ended the game at like 13 life, thanks to Moment of Craving and Wind Grace Acolyte. Um, so this deck, I think, will continue to be quite good. Um, as I've said in multiple videos uh, on this channel... Uh, the deck is going to lose a bunch of consistency, losing Striped Riverwinder, Hieroglyphic Illumination, um, the Desert Lands, right, Wander and Death. Uh, so it is losing some consistency, but I think it will still have all the tools that it needs to uh, be really good. Um, w because the s card pool of the format is shrinking, um, right, we're going from eight sets currently legal now in Standard to five sets legal um, once Guilds of Ravnica comes out. I do think that the general power level of the format is going to go down a little bit, which um, makes control decks uh, very well positioned. So I, I think we are going to have a control-heavy metagame once rotation hits. Uh, that might change uh, if Guilds of Ravnica gives us some spicy tools, but um, we are going to see the white aggro decks nerfed a little bit. We are going to see um, the red aggro decks lose a couple tools, but... Um, we will be having our post-rotation look at Red Deck uh, coming up this week, so keep your eyes peeled for that. But uh, I, I am anticipating uh, Control to be one of the best decks moving forward. It is definitely still going to be my deck of choice for these end boss matches. I don't think I've lost with... Uh, I haven't lost any games in end boss matches since I started playing Blue-Black Control, so that tells you something. I have lost playing other decks, but not, not with the, this Control deck yet, so... That is it for today. Thank you for stopping by. Oh, not this one, this one. All right, thank you for stopping by. Once again, the text version of all these decks are in the description. Um, thank you so much for watching. Just watching our content is a great way to support us. And also, if you want to do a little more, you can hit that like button, hit that subscribe button. Don't forget to ring the bell if you want to make sure you get all of our updates. And then, um, of course, if you want to go the extra mile and support us directly, monetarily, you can become a Patreon subscriber. Of course, once we hit $400 per month as our stretch goal, we will be running two youth scholarship tournaments each school year. And um, we are going to be rolling out some extra perks for our Patreon subscribers as well. So please check that out. And then if you've made it this far in the video... Um, and you are local here on Oahu. Our next Standard Popper Tournament will be next week Sunday, September 16th, over at Westside Comics Comics out in Kapolei. And then um, we are in the process of planning an early October tournament over at MiniQ. This will be our first tournament hosted by MiniQ over in Mililani. Um, so keep your eyes peeled for that. We ha don't have... Um, 
final confirmation on that tournament yet, but it's looking like it's going to happen um, early in October, shortly after rotation happens. And then, of course, October 21st, um, tournament over at Westside Comics and Games. So one last tournament before rotation happens. October 5th hits. Guilds of Ravnica comes out. Rotation happens. Say goodbye to Kaladesh, Aether Revolt, Amonkhet, and Hour of Devastation. Say hello to Guilds of Ravnica. And it is going to be a ton of fun seeing how Standard Popper develops. I'm excited. I hope you're excited. Thank you so much for watching. Uh, once again, hit that like button. Hit that subscribe button. Please consider becoming a Patreon. And I will catch you later. Peace.